keep your blaster handy, the West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise on the Wild West Exodus Hub at beastofwar.com. In a world controlled by massive corporations, a steady aim and split-second decisions are needed for your Megacon to complete its goals. Begin your missions at the Mercs Hub on beastofwar.com. Hey guys, in this episode, I'm joined by Simon, and we're going to be we're going to give you basically two for the price of one. We're going to be looking at two fantastic tactics for the UCM. Mm. Um, fantastic to the point that they're yeah they're a little bit cheesy, but they're epically cinematic as well. So you'll you'll love this. The first one is going to be about condors and using using your dropships mid late game. And the second one is going to be looking at the longbow artillery. Um, if you fancy joining us after the show in the extra long backstage version of the show over on beastofwar.com, we have something quite special going on for uh, in that episode where we're going to be looking at a really cool UCM 1500 point tournament list. So if you want to get an idea of a really cool list, how it all works and the synergies of it, come on across to backstage and join us in that. Right. Kicking off, mm. drop ships, mid to late game. Yes. What, what are our options here? Because well, mine kind of float around not doing very much. And, that's, and that, that can be a problem. Or you feel like it's a bit of a waste. Yeah. You know, whether you give them missiles or not, they're not doing much more than putting in a couple of shots into buildings, trying to go for the Hail Mary against a couple of tanks. Yeah. Now, in this particular scenario here, we've got a couple of Gladius mm -hmm. and their drop ship. Yep. Uh, we've got a couple of the uh, Shatari Tarantula up against Now, this is, this is a classic example mm. for me because I do have a dropship with my Gladius. Yep. And that dropship is by far the most useless of them all because I normally have my Gladius in the position where I want them. I never really de redeploy them, unlike my troops, where I want to keep my mm. dropship shape safe to try and get them off the table. So my dropship really does become a little bit surplus to requirements at exactly, that point. Exactly, yeah. Now, in this, I mean, the tarantulas will normally cause the Gladius a lot of problems. Yes. Um, the weapons are very good against the Gladius. Um, the Gladius' weapons, because of the, the passive saves from the tarantula, um, you know, it's, it's not a great matchup. It's not a bad matchup for the UCM, but it's not a great matchup. Mm -hmm. However, we can do some shenanigans to uh, tip it in our favor. Love it. So, in this case, whether the dropship has a missile or not, yep. because they share a dropship, they both have to fire at the same time, but not move. Yes. So, a uh, one option is you land your dropship mm -hmm. in front of your Gladius. Oh. Now, the thing, the thing to remember yeah. is that you have to play the place template still, the landing yep. zone template, mm -hmm. and it can't be the three inches of your enemy. But this is, this is far enough away that yep. you're okay. Then you can fire. Now, the Gladius, the condor's in the way. Yeah. So you are suffering a plus two to hit penalty at the moment. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, so is the Shoutari trying to shoot you back. Yes. However, so they would normally hit me on yeah, twos. twos they now hit you on fours. That's a big difference. But you also only hit them on fours. Yes. Because you're also blocked by your own condor. That's not so good. But the UCM have the articulated rule, which means that they can choose to unfold their turrets above their tank. That's right. They all go... And they fire from a point that's one inch above the tank. Now, suddenly, if you're one inch above the tank, yeah. you can go on site cleanly over your dropship. So you still hit them on a two. But they're hitting you on they're a four. They're hitting you on a four. I love that's the a UCM. Big, that's a big swing <laughs> in the odds. That's really cool. Did I have to roll for flying on the deck or anything? No, or no, you can just elect to land. He just lands. He just lands down. And can, do I have to roll if he takes off again? No, or no, you can just take off. Oh, I love it. But of course, what you can do is you can say, let's, let's assume that the Gladius destroy both of the, um, the tarantula. Yeah. Even if they don't, the tarantula will obviously hitting you back. But let's say that they've been destroyed. Yep. So these guys get destroyed. What you can do is next turn, this guy can take off, move, and land. Uh huh. And these guys move at their four inches. And they're all part of the same battle group, so they get to do that kind of movement all, uh, yeah. all at the same time. Simon, that's so cheesy. I love it. It's great, isn't it? And it's really cinematic too, because I can see. Uh, I had one moment during one game. 
It was against a PHR player, okay, um, where he was going to hit my Gladius side mm. on. Um, what I did, because I, I thought I had absolutely no other choice, now I see I would actually plan for this in advance, was I swooped in a condor and actually landed it uh, on front. Now, he completely decimated the condor. Exactly. But it left me with my two Gladius that then were, whenever they yeah. were able to activate, they were able to turn around and go. That's oh. it. And, and the, the downside of this tactic is that your opponent can just destroy the condor first. Yeah. So if they've got a lot of things which haven't fired yet. Yes. They can use the smaller gun to destroy your armor fired condor. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be massively anti tank to destroy the condor. Yeah. Normally, when it's flying, they can't be targeted mm -hmm. by, the anti by the weak anti tank. Yeah. Suddenly they can. So that the danger is they destroy that with the weaker anti tank. Yeah. And then something like the tarantula would then be able to shoot you normally. So it's worth bearing in mind that you mm. don't just want to throw it down there unless you're sure that, you know, well, unless you're happy with the consequences. Yes. I mean, ideally, you'll still get a cover safe. Mm -hmm. And you'll have shot at some of the other stuff. Yeah. So as cinematic as it is, uh, it's a great tactic if you are if you use it very deliberately and you make sure that you are going to be able to deal with what's on the other yeah. side of it. It's no. It's no band aid for stupid placement, as I as I <laughs> found, because ultimately. Although I did save my uh, Gladius mm. uh, for a turn, he still dealt with it. So he got the Condor and the Gladius. But well, also bear in mind that if you're facing a faster army, yeah. So if you're facing, let's say, the Scourge, mm -hmm. and your Condor is here, they could very easily, if we grab Go around the here, side of it, move nine around the side. Yeah, flank it. Yeah. So um, it really comes. You have to be aware. It's a good tactic, and it provides you with cover. Yeah. But it's not going to win you the game. Mm -hmm. Usually on its own, yeah. And you have to be aware of what the what the other your opponent is doing, what they can do uh, next turn. But saying that, yeah. if it forces them to come around the side, maybe that's great because it blows up something else you've got over this side of the battlefield, yeah. which can then shoot at them. And it was worth the sacrifice or the to make mm -hmm. them get out of the way and go around you. Awesome stuff. Awesome. Okay, Simon, so, mean, what's the what's the next one that we have? Okay, so this one we're going to look at the longbows. Yeah. Now the longbows are pretty um pretty awesome bits of kit. Yeah, because they can they can fire a number of rounds. Mm -hmm. They've got their they've got their hard shot. They've got their blast. Yeah, they can hit some areas. They also have what we call smart smoke. Yeah. So what I'm going to just set up here. I mean, normally the longbows would be at the back of the table or, or slightly further back. Yes. But just to, so we can show you, use your imagination here. Exactly. here, folks. These things would be way back, way back okay. normally. So again, we'll put those pesky tarantula back. Mm -hmm. You've got your gladius here. Yeah. They're going Again, to be decimated. I mean, by them. it's going to yeah. hurt. It's not not it's not it, not not the end of the world, but it's not not a great situation to be in. Yeah. You make sure the longbows are in the same battle group as your gladius. Okay. And therefore, they can activate at the same time. Yeah. So what you can do is your gladius can shoot as normal. Mm -hmm. Then you use your longbow to put smart smoke on your unit. Mm -hmm. For each longbow that targets the unit, mm -hmm. up to two, a maximum of two longbows. It adds one for units trying to shoot them. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, these guys go from hitting you on twos, hitting you on fours. Right. Again, it's a big swing in the odds. Uh -huh. Suddenly, their big anti-tank weapon, only one of them's going to hit now. Yeah. Not both of them. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, a, that's a huge thing, especially yeah. if you've got a larger unit of Gladius. Mm -hmm. You've got four of them in a big yeah. block. All four of them get protected by the smoke. Yeah. So, and do you have to roll to get the smoke on, or is, is the smoke automatic? Pretty much, ha pretty much happens automatically. Um, and also, you can deact. However, it is worth mentioning it does affect your guys as well. Yes. If you try and fire, mm -hmm. you suffer the um, the penalty as well, which is why you want them in the same battle group. Mm -hmm. Because if they're in a different battle group, you could fire these first, put the smoke on them that, mm -hmm. from, let's say, the next battle group. Yep. But they would have activated a battle group in between, yep. which could have been to shoot at you. Mm -hmm. You could put smoke on them, and then next turn. Well, you've already, you've already taken the damage from the shot. You want it to be in the same battle group. Yeah. So that they can't get that activation of shooting you before mm -hmm. your smoke goes on. Yeah. Then next turn, you can deactivate the smoke whenever you like. Because it's smart smoke. Because it's smart smoke. Yeah. Nanobots, gotta love nanotechnology. <laughs> so you deactivate the smoke, yeah. you fire again. Uh huh. Then the longbows fire I'll and put, put it back up back, back on. on again. Oh, it's like jump, shoot, jump, isn't it? But it's like jump, yeah. It's like shoot, smoke, shoot. And they can so. still get you, they can still shoot you. Yeah, but you've doubled the you, you, you've doubled the yeah. The, they've gone chances. they've gone from a, they've gone from hitting you a five out of six to hitting yeah. you fifty fifty, which is 
Not great odds. Well, it's, it's still all right, but it's yeah. nowhere near the odds they were expecting. Awesome stuff. And awesome yeah, stuff. that can cover a larger squad as you want. So you could have six Sabres in a squad rather Do than... Do they stack? Guys. They stack up to a maximum of two. But I mean, could you use the Condor in front and the Smart Smoke? Um, you could, and that would then add plus four. Really? But they would probably, probably destroy the Condor. Yeah. For something else. The condor wouldn't get protected by the smoke. No, the condor wouldn't protect by the smoke. No. The mm -hmm. condor wouldn't get the smoke. It would only be the squad that you targeted. You yeah. could put land the condor and target the condor with the smoke. And then anything behind the condor would have. The... It wouldn't get the smoke benefit, but yeah. it would mean the condor would be harder to destroy. Mm -hmm. Because they would suddenly be getting plus two to hit the condor. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Right. I think it's fascinating. Have you guys used any of these tactics? If you have. I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. Other than that, myself and Sam are going to get set up because over on beastofwar.com, we have the extra long backstage version where we're going to be discussing a UCM 1500 point tournament list and talking about the nuances and the synergies of that list. Mm. So if you fancy joining us, come across to beastofwar.com and get stuck into that. Other than that, we'll see you in the next episode in a couple of weeks' time. It comes in at uh, 1,494 points, and it starts off with a captain who's mm. a level... Level four. four. Yep. Um, I'll kick off with the field command. You have a Kodiak with a captain in it. Uh, you have three rapiers, and you have two Praetorians in a Raven A. I love that little group. Uh, it's, it's a good little bundle of fun there. I mean, you've 462 got... points. There's a lot in there. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, Terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on beastsofwar.com.